Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Tea Time with me, Thaddeus and Charles, because today is the 25th of March 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Wednesday's afternoon recorded session uh, where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts that we looked at this morning, some new ones as well, and uh, we'll see how everything's kind of getting along um, in the markets. So, yep, as always, before we jump in, a uh, quick mentioning of our, or actually, quick mentioning of our risk disclaimer. So, uh, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, it should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. Um, as always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so <clears throat> now then, um, quick uh, quick mentioning of our uh, JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, um, and of course our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD Research page, which we update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on JFDBank.com and click on the Research tab right there. Um, also, just a quick uh, update on what's happening here in the world um, re in regards to the coronavirus. So, since this morning, um, we've, um, we've seen a, 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 gr uh, a rise in um, some more deaths, deaths basically. So, we, this morning we were around 18,900, 18, so now we're uh, 19,600 and almost 700. So, um, basically, what's uh, another thing important is that, um, as you can see, that the total amount of infections, yes, continues to rise. Um, China continues to lead the way in total amount of infected people. However, uh, Italy, you US and Spain are rapidly uh, accelerating here, but the problem here, as you can see, is Spain as well. So. Uh, Spain surpassed uh, the Chinese figure, uh, total deaths number, and uh, well, I mean, it's not looking good here uh, for Spain, so uh, you can see the, how the critical everything is right now. Um, so, yep, like I said, hopefully the number will slow down, but uh, again, for now, it doesn't seem to be uh, the case. So, uh, let's jump into the markets, let's see how they are reacting today. So, uh, this morning I talked about uh, FTSE 100, um, and and uh, basically, I was tell telling you guys to keep a close eye on this downside line here, uh, taken from the high of the 24th of February. And what I was saying that in a way, if we could see a push further north. Uh, we could see a test of this uh, four, four, uh, sorry, 5,500 level. Um, the index could overshoot it. And uh, well, the main focus will be on this downside line here. So although we did get some positive news yesterday from the US, but still... Um, as I've mentioned this morning, uh, this could be uh, something of a uh, buy the rumor, sell the fact uh, situation. But again, for now, let's let's keep it short and simple. Uh, for now, basically, from the technical side, if this downside line continues to hold, well, guess what? I mean, we could see another round of selling here. So, guys, guys, for now, um, although. We saw a push higher. It declined a little bit here. You can see, but still the index is holding on to the positive in, the, in a positive territory. Um, it will be quite interesting to see um, where the. Uh, the U.S. markets will uh, will go, and uh, can the European ones, until they have still a few hours left uh, to trade, can the European ones drag along, and or let's say, uh, can the Europe, uh, can the U.S. indices direct the European ones uh, right now? So because uh, for now it was the um, that the European indices were uh, kind of leading, showing the way for the U.S. futures. Um, and uh, right now the markets have opened in the U.S., so let's let's uh, take a look at that. But coming back to the FTSE here and to the technical picture here, um, basically um, the um, as long as it remains below this downside line, yes, we will continue aiming for the downside overall. Uh, similar story here with DAX. Um, now with DAX here and uh, the index traveled higher, tested the downside line here taken from the high of the 20th of February um, and you can see that now it's reversing back to the downside. So in a way, this is what I talked about this morning. 
that we could see a push uh, a little bit higher here, a test of this downside line, but if this downside line continues to hold, and yep, another round of selling could be possible. So, <clears throat> excuse me, as you can see, now the index is kind of balancing uh, slightly in the red, let's put it that way, and uh, in a way this could lead towards lower levels. However, the way we could play this one out safely here um, would be uh, given the fact that we managed to travel higher here, we'll keep an eye on this 9,141 zone. I've, I spoke about this level previously, and uh, if we see a drop back below this, then yep, we will aim for this highlighted territory here, this key area of support around the 8,255 mark. So we'll keep an eye on this one. But again, if, uh, in order to get comfortable with sl slightly get comfortable with, with uh, lower levels, we would like to see a drop back below the 9,141 zone. So here we'll keep an eye on this one. Um, in terms of the upside, it, uh, the same story remains, the same idea remains. Uh, we need to see a push above the uh, 10,280 zone here uh, before considering higher levels. Uh, S&P 500, so <clears throat> the market is open and uh, this is what I uh, spoke about, uh, this is what I talked about yesterday. Um, I was covering S&P as well and basically what I was telling you guys that we may see this uh, push higher. Um, so we did get that, We yesterday we got that push higher but um, what, what I was also saying that in a way if it continues to drift higher but let's say uh, struggles to overcome this this upside support line and let me just show you what i'm talking about this i need for for this i need to jump into a monthly chart now this upside support line is running here from the lowest point of, of 2011. Um, you can see that the price is currently balancing around it and just slightly below it. If we jump back into a daily chart, you can see that clearly. Um, the, the big question here is can this uh, stay below this? And uh, of course, as I've mentioned uh, yesterday, is also that uh, we're keeping a close eye on that monthly candle because if the monthly candle uh, stays below this this upside line, then well, I mean there could be some further declines um, in coming into in April. So, but if if we see the price uh, balance and uh, closing above this upside support line, now of course this could increase the chances of a potential um, of a potential move higher here. But of course, another thing to consider is this downside line taken from the high of the 20th of February. So basically, long story short, something that we will keep in mind right now in order for us to get really comfortable with higher levels or let's say a larger correction to the upside, we would like to see a push, a break of this upside line, oh sorry, a break of this downside line first and then a push above the 2,729 zone here, which uh, previously acted as a good area of support here back on the uh, in June 2019. Now it could take the role of key resistance level and then, yep, we will uh, take it from there, guys. For now, uh, we are at a very interesting spot. Um, the I don't get surprised if the index continues to, let's say, for the remaining days of this month, continues to balance around this, around, near this, near this upside line, because it will be a very interesting level for everybody to watch. And uh, the big battle between the bulls and the bears will be around here somewhere. So keep your eyes on this one, guys. <clears throat> Uh, now then, WTI oil very quickly. Um, so for now, everything's kind of working according to plan. Uh, this week I was t uh, and last week and this week I was talking about uh, this potential idea where we could see a bit of a push higher. But if it struggles to get back above the 26.08 level, that's by the way the highest point of 2016. If if we see that the price is struggling to get back above this level, then well, another round of selling could be possible. For those who are more on the cautious side, you could just wait this one out and wait until we see a drop below that psychological 20 territory. Um, and th uh, this way, the the commodity would con would confirm a forthcoming lower low, and uh, yep, the lower levels could be met for now. Um, yes, we are still considering this idea where uh, where already maybe we already have seen that little uprise, um, but if it continues to struggle to overcome this uh, 26.08 level, then yep, uh, we are aiming for another round of selling. Uh, for the upside, in order to consider some higher levels, at least in the short run, we would like to see a push above the 30.17 level here and only then aim for the upside. For now, 
uh, will stay put. Um, again, we are more bearish than bullish on this one, and especially in the near term. Um, so, yep, let's see if this can travel further south. Gold, very quickly on this. Um, this uh, this morning, uh, gold managed to push a little bit higher here, uh, managed to overcome the 1633 territory, and then drifted back down. Um, <clears throat> yesterday, when I was covering this one, I was I was telling you that we may see a bit of a correction here to the downside and uh, in a way we got that little correction already today but don't get me wrong we are quite ex uh, overstretched here uh, this week so maybe a, a bit more downside could be possible here and uh, we could see this one drifting a little bit lower so in a way if we do see something like that then um, then yes, we will uh, we will consider this upside support line as the next potential target. This upside support line is running from around the lows of uh, the low of 20th of 22nd of May here, and um, in case this upside line continues to hold, and of course this is a good, this is good, this will be a good sign for the bulls to step in again and take advantage of the lower price here and drive this one to the upside again. However. Don't get me wrong. If 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 it struggles to get all the way here back to these this territory, then we may see that reversal earlier. Um, and uh, yep, then of course we will aim for the uh, 1652 zone, 52, 53 area somewhere around there. But the, the next more important level for us will be around the that psychological 1700 zone or even a little bit above that. 1703 which was which is the current high of march the big question here in gold is can this uh, commodity uh, regain all the regain all the losses made in the first half of the month so this is going to be very very interesting to see we still have about four trading days to go uh, till the end of this month so uh, let's see if it can if it can do this if it can travel higher uh, for now where we're looking here for is maybe a bit of a correction here and probably uh, gold might end this uh, this month in the slightly in the slightly in the red not much um, but again don't get me wrong in the last trading day of the month we could see maybe a huge spike to the upside which could bring the uh, precious metal back to towards the psych psychological 17 uh, 1700 level or even 1703 again for now from from the near-term perspective uh, we are looking for maybe a, a small correction again to the downside here and if this area holds continues to hold then we could see another round of buying however if this um, if the um, if this upside line breaks and we see the uh, commodity drifting and let me just actually adjust this level here let now I'll draw the arrow but um, the level that we're going to be looking at here right now will be somewhere around here so this 15 1547 zone as you can see acted as a good area of support previously here on the 5th of February um, and also actually by the way it's the lowest point of February if I'm not mistaken there we go that's correct so that's the lowest point of February um, and you can see also on the uh, 18th of March we uh, this area acted as a good area of resistance so that's why we would like to consider this potential area here, the um, the 1547, as a as a possible breakout zone here for uh, lower levels. So that's why this is going to be the level for us, you know, after which we could consider uh, a little bit uh, to a, a little a, a slightly lower levels. There we go. Uh, so uh, Ripple, very quickly on this. Um, I've looked at this one recently and uh, basically I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this downside line taken from the high of the 15th of February. Um, let me just jump into a four hour chart very quickly here. You can see uh, that the price continues to flirt with this downside line and uh, in a way it still, it did try to overcome it a little bit here but quickly got back below this. Um, to be honest, as long as this line kind of uh, let's say continues to hold the the price down we are going to be a little bit more bearish than bullish um, and especially if the price suddenly starts dropping back below the 0 0.1450 zone right here and then if we if we do see something like this then yep we will aim for these lower levels for now we're just uh, very uh, cautious um, and uh, if by any chance we do get a strong push through this downside line and a break above the 0 0.1760 area now this is where it could become a little bit more exciting for uh, for the buyers. So keep your eyes on this one. Um, 
USDJPY now jumping into a few pairs um, quickly I wanted to show you this so previously I looked at this one and uh, what I was talking about here was uh, this upside support line taken from the low of the 9th of March um, in a way I was aiming for this um, upside line maybe to get a test but as you can see uh, the 21 EMA here on the four hour chart continues to act as that good area of support um, you can see that the pair is now uh, close to its key barrier key a resistance level near the 111.60 so the big question here is can we br have a nice strong push above it if we do then the next target for us is the highest point of February which is around the 112.23 zone so we'll keep an eye on this one don't get me wrong we may even overshoot this uh, overshoot that highest point of February we could even create a new um, a new high here for this year because that's currently the highest point of this year and uh, but then if let's say the bears decide to quickly push this one back down so we could just have ourselves something like we, of a false breakout here uh, and then we could drift a little bit lower again so for now of course this is a little bit uh, trying to predict the future too much but what we're going to do here for now from the very short term perspective is we're going to keep an eye on this barrier as you can see the pair is trying to uh, climb higher let's see if it can ac accomplish that if we do get a strong push above this 111.60 then yes we will aim for higher levels for now be very careful uh, in terms of the downside still the same idea remains we need to see a drop below the 108.58 zone here and then we could consider some some downside uh, this is the level for us after which we could get a little bit more comfortable and probably let me just highlight this one for our future reference um, as I said this is going to be the level that we're going to be monitoring carefully um, now then jumping into NZDCHF um, here the situation is very interesting as well because um, on one hand yes of course overall we're still below this downside line taken from the high of the 27th of December or to 26th of December even um, but on the from the very short term perspective you can see that we do have this downside line here which uh, got violated and uh, and which got broken and you can see that the uh, the rate is currently balancing above it so um, after the pair tr try to push higher and try to overcome this barrier uh, which is the high of the uh, 19th of March around the 0 0.5795 zone uh, it tested the 100 EMA here on the four hour chart shown as the green line and then drifted a little bit lower however the pair continues to balance not only above this downside line but also above this upside support line here uh, taken from the recent low here the lowest point of March um, in a way, I would say that uh, right now uh, NZDCHF is presenting itself with a nice opportunity, a trade opportunity here. Uh, the only thing is, of course, we'll be very careful and cautious because what we're going to do here, I'm not saying that this is going to uh, travel higher right now. What we, where we're looking here for is a a potential break now if we do get a pu push above the 0 0.5795 zone this increases the chances of a potential move higher here towards some some of these levels like for example the 0 0.5931 zone which is not far from this uh, 200 EMA on the four hour chart uh, this could be a nice good target we're not going to target uh, anything higher we're just going to aim for this one first and then after that we'll reevaluate everything again so a long story short basically if we do get a, a strong push above this 0 0.5795 Five territory then yes we will aim for this 200 EMA here on the four hour chart which currently almost coincides with the 0 0.5931 zone in terms of the downside now here of course the more comfortable level for us after which after a break of which we could aim for lower levels would be this one 0 0.5 0 0.5511 uh, territory but um, of course in order to maybe not to miss out on something here uh, we will look at this level here the 0 0.56 territory so if we do get a drop below the 0 0.56 zone then well yep we will aim for some lower levels here um, we could even target the the lowest point of March the current lowest point of March we, we have to say this because um, at the moment the, well the March is not finished yet so that's the current lowest point of March around the 0 0.5298 or in a way you could round it up to the 0.53 zone um, so 
long story short, basically these are the two levels that we're keeping close eye on. We are a little bit more bullish than bearish on this one. Uh, however, it all depends on how the whole uh, uh, the whole commodity market uh, reacts and performs, and uh, of course how equities uh, move on further. Because if equities start sliding then we could see a bit of a, a decline here on NZDCHF. But if there could be, um, if the precious metals start rising and equities start rising, then there could be uh, more upside on this for this pair. So keep your eyes on this one. Uh, GPP NZD. So <clears throat> I've looked at this one this morning and uh, 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 well, I was talking about this upside support line taken from the low of the 30th of July 2019. And uh, as you can see, the um, the pair continues to balance above this upside line. Uh, it did try to push higher today, but still uh, the bears quickly pushed it back down, but still they cannot push the rate below this upside support line. Um, and of course, this uh, psychological two level that we're keeping a close eye on. Now, probably let me just uh, quickly um, uh, drag this highlighted area, copy this highlighted area, because that's something that we're really keeping a close eye on right now. And basically what we're looking here for is a nice good close at, at, at least of a four hour candle below, or actually, to be honest, I'll reiterate that. I'll, I'll take my words back. We are looking here for a daily close because again, we do get these f uh, overshoots here, um, but n still the daily candle is not able to close. If we do get a daily close here below, this uh, psychological two territory then yes we'll aim further for further declines uh, we'll be very careful of course near the 200 EMA here uh, on the daily chart but um, if that fails to withhold then yes further declines could be possible so that's why guys for now from the technical side uh, keep your eyes on this upside line uh, if that gets broken then the next uh, area to monitor will be that psychological two zone but if we get that uh, daily close below this then yes, uh, we will aim for slightly lower levels. Uh, with the upside, still the same idea remains. The 2.0764 area, 65, roughly around here. And that's what we're, we're looking for in order to aim for higher levels. So a break of this would be required. Uh, GBPUSD, um, this is what I mentioned uh, recently in my videos. And uh, basically uh, with... Um, with GBP USD, um, I was telling you guys yesterday, especially also to keep your eye, keep your eyes on this 1.11, uh, 1.1880 zone and 1.1950. So today we did get that overshoot here, but as you can see, the bears quickly pushed it lower. Now again, a quick reminder of these levels: the 1.1950 is the lowest point of uh, uh, 2016. That's basically the uh, after the Brexit vote. Uh, that that's the super decline that we had here in the pound, and um, that was the low of that year. And uh, the 1.1880 is the um, the uh, let me just jump into a monthly chart because that's going back into 1985 right now. So <clears throat> that's basically the low of uh, May uh, 1985. So you can see how far we have traveled. And while I'm here on this monthly chart, again, I will repeat the same idea. If we see the monthly candle staying below this territory here, then, well, I mean, further declines could be possible, especially going into April. So uh, for now, be very careful and be cautious. Uh, we still have, like I said, a few days left uh, to trade in March. And um, if the rate gets maintained here below this territory, then, well, aim for another round of selling. And finally, Euro USD here. Uh, again, uh, the same idea, or should I say similar idea, um, this morning, I, I and or actually the way I'm talking about this pair already the, for the whole week, um, this downside line, as long as it continues to hold, we are going to uh, remain somewhat bearish. As, as you can see, we did have an attempt to push higher, but the the bulls were not strong enough uh, to kind of lift the rate above this downside line taken from the high of the 9th of March. Um, for now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that this is now going to roll over and uh, start uh, sliding to the downside. Uh, no, however, we will keep a close eye on some of these levels. So what we need here right now is we need to see at least 
a four hour candle uh, drop and a close below the 1.0777 uh, zone and uh, this way of course then uh, we will be very cautious because we do have this little area of support here around the uh, 1.0744 uh, but if that fails to withhold then yes uh, a further decline towards this 1.0650 territory could be possible so that's why guys for now uh, be very careful and uh, yep let's see how this is gonna play out again with the upside uh, as I've mentioned this morning we need to see at least a push above the uh, this 1.0888 level and then we could consider some higher levels again guys for now uh, like I said let's see how this is gonna play out it's a it, it is at a very tricky spot uh, but um, let's, there, it could present itself with a nice opportunity, a nice trade opportunity here. For now, like I said, we're just observing this one because it's it's too um, too tricky at this point here. Because like I said, we need to see either a good drop below the 1.0777 level again, or a good push above the 1.0888 level. So. Keep your eyes on this one, guys. Uh, stay safe, and I hope you really enjoyed this uh, this video. Again, uh, as I've mentioned already previously, I do apologize for not running this in, in live session, as a live session, uh, because at the moment I do not have the capabilities to do so. So uh, hopefully the whole situation with the coronavirus changes uh, and uh, we could get back to normal uh, again. So anyway, Stay safe, guys, and I'll uh, catch my video tomorrow morning at my, tr uh, my, my, my after around nine o'clock, or sorry, seven o'clock uh, GMT time. Um, and uh, yep, my trader's espresso. So yep, see you then, guys. Stay safe. Bye bye.